Everybody's always getting so many views for talking about the problems, but today we're going to talk about 10 solutions for America. What do you think about these ideas? Yeah, everybody's always talking about problems and all these different types of pollution, but how about how to solve them and get some solutions? Woo! So uh, let's just get into it. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, Andrew. I was challenged by a celebrity friend, Andrew, who said, you know what? You guys on your podcast, it's great, but you guys are always talking about the problems and not your own solutions that you came up with. All right, well, you know what? When I see a problem, I solve it. Check out the... Well, anyways, man, we're just brainstorming. These are ideas. Uh, you know, I think we're trying to be bipartisan, um, unbiased. I think we're reasonable. I think we're compassionate people. So let us know what you think about these ideas. Maybe you share some of them. David. And, and you know the thing about the Asian is they always have the engineering mindset. The engineer is not partisan. He is trying to solve it. Point number one, Andrew, having five political parties instead of two. Whoa, 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 so, so, whoa, so, so, whoa, so here, 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 Here's what's good about it. Right now, we got two, Andrew. Nobody's happy with it. You got a country of 400 million people. Two is too few, Andrew. Yeah. If you switch to parliamentary, where you're something like Europe, you got 15 for a small country over there. It's too much. Hey, well, it looks like you guys are uh, <laughs> going back to your roots and trying to be more like us, huh? What about five? Mm. Some people said it's already split into five or six right now, but when it comes down to picking, you only got a binary. Yeah, I mean, I think we can all agree that just the two political party system is just kind of making everything divisive. It makes things on the extreme. And I'm not saying, uh, you know, Andrew Yang should be president, but I'm just saying Andrew Yang has been saying ranked choice voting because ultimately, guys, everybody's catering to the 15 to 20% extreme ends. And I think that that is true. I agree with that point with Mr. Yang. But anyways, what I'm saying is I just think there needs to be more options on the table Two is not enough. It says GOP holds a clear edge on economy, crime, and immigration. Democrats have a clear advantage on climate change, abortion, and healthcare policy. Right. So you sort of pick it, and all those things are important. But now you just got to pick three of them. Nah. And then you got to say, what, forget the other three? How logical is that? Nah, let's just say, you know, the Democrats generally known as the nice, well-intentioned people. And then the Republicans are the cold-hearted, ruthless realists and right. you know and whichever way you want to lean that's kind of how things are depicted right uh, now. a lot of people on reddit had broken this down before they said it actually should be broken down into democratic republican libertarian pirate technocratic progressive patriot prohibition green party social democracy party and this is how the map would break down if there was six or eight or nine parties uh california oregon washington uh, uh, would go technocratic because they're more into driven by tech. All the parties in the USA. Point number two, Andrew. Every DA and police chief should be tougher on crime. But in terms of a macro leader, maybe you want somebody who's not so warlike. So on a macro federal level, you want somebody less warlike. But in terms of a micro localized level, you probably want your police chief in DA to not be soft on crime. Wait, wait, wait. Let me just clarify what you're saying. You're suggesting that maybe America stops meddling so much with other countries on a, you know, military level. And maybe we focus more of our energy on keeping our cities and streets safe. Right, right, right. But it kind of satisfies both parties. So let's say, for example, Andrew, you're a lefty, right? Well, guess what? You get the president. But guess what? If you're a righty, your community is more safe so you can like go play with your kids at the park without worrying about the, uh, something bad happening. Yeah, okay, interesting. Let us know what you think in the comments it's down below. It's a micro versus macro application. Most people only vote in the federal, you know, national elections, but we're talking about micro application versus macro. There are so many different scopes of society, so many different focal lengths. It's the smart thing to do, guys. Literally, it's just called balance. Point number three, Andrew, universal basic services. Mm. So this is not universal basic income because the services make it so you got to use the services versus you if i could just give you money you might not make smart decisions with the money well dave this sounds like you're trying to be a socialist how about this how about this no 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 it's not socialism because andrew you get free plan b pills because you know how everybody's always fighting over abortion in america what about the morality of it or what about the stability of it what if you just gave everybody free plan b pills to Cut the snake off at the 
you know, at the core. Okay, what are some other basic services you're talking about? Are you just talking about healthcare? What type of level of healthcare? Have you thought this through? Gyms. People need more ability to have gyms, but we outsource everything to the private sector. Andrew, what about more outdoor gyms? But you know, since America's a crazy place, people are gonna try to destroy the outdoor gym. You get the outdoor gyms that can't be destroyed as easily or vandalized as easy. Okay, so that's more like parks and recs. But yeah, I mean, I agree that there should be Obviously, affordable health care, if not free health care, basic health care for everybody is but, needed. But here's the thing, Andrew. Here's the trade-off. Because before people go, oh, what, you're being socialist. If you act bad, Andrew, you get your privileges to these UBS services taken away or minimized. Oh. Yeah. What? That makes sense, right? You're incentivizing good behavior. I like that. But and it kind of sounds not, like a social credit I, score. <laughs> I'm not putting the threshold that high, you know, like I'm just saying like you get a lot, but you got to give a lot. We need to require more of the citizen. Why is right. always the citizen trying to blame the infrastructure? It's a two way street. Right. Uh, point number four, Andrew, I'm saying increase EBT. Mm. So you get more food stamps. But here's the thing. You get more, but you and you can buy air fryers with the EBT, but you can you're limited to relatively healthy choices. Whoa. See, see think about the, tr it's a, you get more, but then you get your choices more regulated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that, no, I think food stamps make sense for sure. And I think it's a good system, but I think that people, I wish people would buy more healthier stuff, you know? But when you're I, at the store and you see somebody uh, with just all the worst choices and it's, it's you gotta be, more limited. But we're talking about free market capitalism, right? And companies can serve whatever type of food they want, right? I mean, this is America. It's a free country, right? You should be able to, if you want to make and sell healthy, uh, unhealthy food to people, then they get to buy. Right. But I'm saying that at some point, the companies do have to be uh, doing higher protein versions of mac right, and right, cheese right. and Velveeta. Yeah. Or things and like at the end of the day, listen, if you get government money, uh, I feel like it should lean more towards at least like I'm not saying vegan food, but like healthy-ish food, you know? Food healthy-ish. Healthy-ish. Come on, we healthy know that, ish. yes, you know, people, they have been conditioned a certain way through all the reps they've seen in their life. I'm not trying to pull a Michelle Obama here when she's like, oh, we only need leafy things, even though people went against her, even though it was a good idea because they said it was this and that. Anyway, point number five, Andrew. There are nonpartisan issues, but guess what, Andrew? I realize none of them get people's blood going. You know what are some of them, Andrew? Net neutrality. You know, just not letting the broadband people like control all the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. um, generally speaking, Andrew, people do not like big ph pharma price gouging. Right. People want lower grocery store prices. Mm -hmm. It's But it seems like a lot of other issues seem like they can be racialized or tribalized. Uh, you know what are things that are unpopular though, Andrew? Military drafts. Right. You know why? Because it impacts everybody. You know what else is unpopular? I looked into it. Having police officers have end of the month quotas for tickets. Right. Because they affect everybody. But David, you know what is popular? Is smala sauce. And now it's on Amazon. As inflation is making all the other prices go up, you can get a sweet deal. Free shipping on Amazon. Smala sauce. Check it out. No, seriously. It's the best place to get it right now. Pop it up. I'll say this. Here's the thing, Andrew. I got something that's a common sense solution for America that both sides are going to find unpopular. What? So, national service. Oh. And when I say national service, I'm not talking about military conflicts because I know America's involved in a lot of overseas stuff that people don't agree with. I'm talking about cleaning up the parks. Andrew, me and you grew up in church. We had to do a ton of community service. Yeah. Picking up parks, man. Yes, we had yes, to yes. double thick gloves no. on. We watching for needles, hypodermic stuff, but we still did it as kids. Like, we just was trying to contribute to the society. I don't know if we were trying to get into uh, heaven or what it was, but we did it. Yeah, no, and we, I remember cleaning up, um, you know, other church members' yards and like doing some yard work for them and just donating our time. Soup and I think, kitchens. I think young people have to be forced to donate some of their time to doing good things in the community, man. You, like, you have to, like, you have to feel and touch the community and care for it. Be forced to care for it. I think even if it's part of school credit, you got, like, what happened to community service at school? Like, like let's increase that. And then, like, yeah, like, let's just increase that outside yeah. of school. And maybe. then maybe people will just learn to, like, contribute to a shared goal beyond their emotional feelings on issues where emotions are always going to be different about how you feel about identity-based issues. But you're just cleaning up the park to make sure the streets are clean so everybody can have a better life. Mm. Um, look, 
On many issues, Americans see little to no common ground. For example, Andrew, they say foreign policy, the economy, the environment, budget deficit, immigration, gun policy, abortion. However, the things that people do want to work on, Andrew, inflation, affordability of health care, People are against drug addiction. People are against gun violence. They're against violent crime. They're worried about the state of morality. They're against, most people are against illegal immigration. Overall, like even the Democrats, surprise, you know what I mean? But yeah, varying levels. The p- quality of public K through 12 schools, because whether your kid goes to a K through 12 public school or not, you will have to interact with people out of the, produced out of these systems. So you want the systems to be better. So you have a general more I guess just better educated, just better populist, right? Um, people do care about climate change. Andrew, you know what's an issue that is very little has very little dissent on, Andrew? The conditions of roads, bridges, and other physical infrastructure. Everybody can agree on that. Yeah, everybody can agree that they want <clears throat> fixed roads and stuff like that. Right, right, right. Um, domestic terrorism, everybody's against that. Everybody's against international terrorism, and everybody doesn't like unemployment. Mm. Point number six, Andrew, there has to be a media bias map that is regulated by third party agencies, but it's not just like a media tracker like these. It has to be on every show and almost every common commentator almost has to state their biases. Right. Listen, I still support free speech. Everybody should be able to say what they want, but everybody has got to get a context for what that person's ultimate goals they're trying to achieve is. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, free speech is, Great. It's amazing. It is one of the freedoms of America. But I don't know if people understood that when they, when the forefathers said free speech, I don't know if they understood how much free speech there would be. There's a lot coming at you from different angles, from your phone, from your TV, from your laptop, from your friend, from the radio, from the TV, from the radio. Somebody, this is going to be a bipartisan issue. If somebody gets really popular telling kids to eat a ton of donuts, how could that possibly be good? That's their free speech to tell all the kids to eat donuts six times a day. But literally, that is going to be so, there's going to be so many downstream ramifications. Point number seven, Andrew, you have to regulate some material and entertainment media and the internet. Literally, there has to be some, everybody always, oh, it's freedom, it's freedom, it's freedom. Yeah, you have the freedom to absolutely destroy yourself too, right? Ooh. Listen, guys. I'm just talking about the bookends, the worth 10, 15% on the spectrum. Andrew, maybe Sexy Red on one side, Alex Jones on the other side, down ramp by the algorithm. Drill rap, you're talking about getting the drop by a thought, using your Glock on your ops. Maybe you get down ramped. Maybe Proud Boys material also gets down ramped. Mm, Well, I, I think there's some regulation on some of the platforms. Obviously, like YouTube does regulate hateful content, hateful speech, violent stuff, gross stuff. But then there's always those alternative platforms, which I'm not going to name, but you know, that are a little bit uh, 100% free. I just think, listen, guys, everybody, there got to be some common sense yeah. reform to Yeah, it. I think for me, I think some other things I would think about is like regulating harder on age for social media. I think that there is a certain limit for kids to have social media. I don't think kids should have social media in their hands at school during class with access to the entire internet. How could that be a good idea? Unfilled, think about it. In your pocket, in class, under your desk, when you're in fourth grade, you have unfiltered internet. You could be looking at porn and way even worse stuff than porn during class in your pocket. And just be like, I just think that maybe, I don't know if there needs to be like phone lockers at school or something. I mean, someone's going to make money off selling a bunch of phone lockers to school districts and stuff. But I'm just saying some version of this because teachers are having trouble teaching their kids. Now, if there's another way to teach the kids, somebody come up with it. But right now, it's still human to human stuff. And there needs to be some better way so that kids can sit still and at least, at least like, sit still with each other like i don't even i'm not saying every kid has to learn the same exact thing but because yeah, different people i guess are like culturally more uh physical learners some people more visual the attention is too crazy like listen even if you told me hey a third grader keeps watching your videos during class i'd be like hey tell that third grader put their phone away and stop watching fun bros point number eight andrew uh People with a history of mental illness can't get guns this is actually one of the most bipartisan issues uh, right now, yeah, this every, every other issue, 
Yeah, every other issue with gun policy has a huge spread. I mean, David, this seems common sense. Is this not already happening? Well, uh, basically, you even just look at what happened with Trump. That guy actually had a history of slight mental illness. Mm. And uh, what about these grocery store bullet vending machines? What do you think? Do they got to go? Kind of a weird idea. Man, I mean, I could, I could see having that in the gun range, like yeah, being more yeah. logical, buy some bullets at the gun range, but no, right next to the Fanta is hilarious. Yeah, getting, getting milk and hollow tips is crazy and get some armor piercers. Bro, I'm just saying, you know, yeah, anyways. Point number nine, Andrew, there's just some common sense stuff that for whatever reason is just not getting past, Andrew. You need crosswalks that are timed like Asia so you can have the ticking. You know, in Hong Kong, the, the crosswalks, it like ticks more to let you know that the crosswalk's about to run out. So it's for people who can't see very well. Right. Some, some, they do that in some states. Uh, Andrew, why aren't scammers not getting prosecuted more heavily? And why isn't there more agencies dedicated to stopping overseas scammers? Yeah, man. I think scammers make people lose trust in things. I think anything that makes you lose trust in, 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 in just everyday institutions. Now, you could say that everyday institutions are corrupt or whatever you want to say. I don't know. But I'm just saying people losing trust in everything is not good. No, it's nihilistic. Uh, rev Revising the food pyramid, it already has been revised, but I would like everybody to, I would like the government to come out and issue a statement saying, yes, at a time we were controlled by big corn or big wheat to like basically stimulate a very wrong food pyramid mm. because we like basically hurt our own populace because our homies owned all the corn stocks. Yeah. Um, using digital systems that are way more modern to verify things for even government paperwork instead of analog systems. Mm. Right now, people are like, digital stuff can be faked, but then they have their entire life savings on digital too. So it doesn't make any sense. Ranked choice voting, whatever, right? Andrew, don't, a lot of people agree that companies should not be allowed to dump toxic things to make more money. Mm. Now, that seems like pretty common sense, right? Because that's going to impact everybody down the line, whether you live in a rich neighborhood, poor neighborhood, middle class neighborhood. How about more real world education, Andrew? Vocational schools, financial literacy. Mm. Like actual real world examples that help people live in school taught to them when they're kids. Yeah, I think every math problem for a few years in school should be have to do with money. I think it should just because that's the that's really when you use math. That's really is when you're dealing with finances, money, buying, selling things. But they still talk about selling apples. Who's selling apples anymore? When they when they came up with that problem, people used to sell apples. If a train leaves Boston going at 80 miles per hour. Stop, just use Google Maps, okay? Just talk about money, man. People need financial liter literacy. For sure, for sure. I got this, Andrew. Free lunch and free breakfast at schools, obviously. But here's the thing. They gotta be tasty, but they gotta be healthy. And I'll tell you this, Andrew. Why shouldn't the kids that do better in school stay out of trouble, get a little bit better grades, maybe have access to a few more treats or premium options on a free lunch and free breakfast. Come on, man, we gotta work. And then point number 10, Andrew, just more acknowledgement that compassion and competence cannot be mutually exclusive. It feels like the Democrats are filled with compassion, no grasp of the real world, no competence, and Republicans might lack compassion for people born into worse cards in life. Yeah. Yep. It is the classic Tin Man, Scarecrow, Wizard of Oz dilemma. Well, guys, you've heard some of these suggestions, some of these ideas. We are not experts, but we think a lot about it. So let us know in the comments down below what you think about these ideas. Which one of them do you like? I feel like at the end of the day, you know, we're uh, educated, progressive, compassionate people, but also we got some common sense. So, you know, and, and, and I think that these are all reasonable ideas. So could these really help America? Which ones would you go for? And what are some of your ideas? Let what us know in the are comments. some ideas? Let us know what you think of our ideas. Are they implementable? But you know what I wanted to do because I, we got challenged by somebody. Don't just talk about the problems. Think of some, some solutions. By it's the way, got, it's fun to think about the solutions. It's fun. I don't know where these words go. If maybe it seeps into the young mind of a future politician or, you know, it just gets the conversation going. At least you have these ideas and this is what like, you know, guys like us are thinking about. So yeah. Anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below. What are some of your ideas? 
Do you think they would work? And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.